I'm going to tell you about the five parts of the logbook. The first part is simply the front cover. And you want to put your name on here. I like to put a starting date and an ending date because I have a lot of logbooks. This helps me find the logbook I want. So part one is the front cover. Part two is the table of contents. Basically you have three columns. The first column, which is very narrow, is the page number where you can find a task. The second column is the task itself. And just have a label task here. And the key idea here is every task has a descriptive title. So when you look back a year later, you know exactly what you were doing, what project it was, and what the task was about. And the last column, which again is very na uh, narrow, is the date. So again, three columns. Page, task, with the descriptive title, and the date. So that's part two, the table of contents. And you want to reserve the first two, three, or four pages of your logbook for your table of contents. Um, the third part of the logbook is the page numbering system. And um, the easy way to do this, let's go to the end of this logbook. On a given set of pages, you only have to have the page number in one place, on the bottom right hand corner or the bottom left hand corner. The reason for having the outside corners here, it's very easy to flip through and find page numbers. And so the quick way to add page numbers, let's go, this is page 39, so you just start right here. Page 41, flip it, 43, 45. The fourth part of the logbook is tasks. And uh, I'll show you how to do this, but um, you just basically go to the end of your logbook, add the next new task, start going. And the fifth part of the logbook, and I don't have any examples here, but at the end of the logbook, you paste things that you might want to refer to. So for example, if I've got a process of how to run a great meeting, the steps I'm going to follow, and I'm working on learning how to run a great meeting, I'll type that out and I'll paste it back here and then I can refer to that. So that's the fifth part of a great logbook. Okay, I'm going to show you how to do a task next. My initials. I put the page number. This is page one of. I'm not sure how many I'll have. I might need one page, might need two, might need three. So I'll just leave that blank for now. Come back later and fill that in. And the next part is a descriptive title. And the project I'm doing, I'm building a rack for my backyard. So this is the rack project. And the particular task is end cap. Um, I'm building a rack out in my backyard and I'm using um, channel tube uh, made out of steel and really this project is an excuse to learn how to weld and I've never welded in my life before this project so I thought this would be fun to do and it's summertime. The basic problem I have right now I'm going to have a um, horizontal part of this rack like this and this has got an open end and I need to close this end off so that water doesn't get in here and so the problem I'm facing is how to do this because I've never done anything like this. I'm going to just make a little sketch. So I've got steel, square tube, and I need to cover in. And my goal for this task, I could put down here, weld a plate on the end, because that's my original idea. But a better goal is cover the end so it's watertight. So I start generating ideas. How could I do this? Well, my first idea. is weld cover plate. Hmm. That would certainly solve the problem. Uh, another idea I have is I could take this piece of square tube and I could glue plastic or metal cover. 
And one problem I immediately see with my welding, I'm not a very good welder and I leave gaps and stuff and I'm not sure that if I weld something here that I'll get it watertight. So another idea I have is I could tack weld or spot weld to hold a metal plate on and then run a glue line. to get water seal. And then I generate, what I want to do is generate as many ideas as possible in a very short time and then pick the very best combination of ideas. I'm going to go offline and do this and after I get this done then I'll create a step-by-step -step plan and then I'll implement my plan and then I'll review my task and see what I learned and what my next steps are on the project. Okay, I'd like to share with you five tips for the logbook. Um, the first tip is very simple. Build your practice over time. Uh, if you haven't done a logbook before, you're not going to be used to it. And just do the best you can. And, if, and over a period of time, several months, you'll build in the habits of keeping a great logbook. Uh, the second tip is to be flexible. Uh, my rule is I want to document everything in real time and uh, that's virtually impossible to do. So I miss perfection a lot of times and I'm just flexible or I innovate in order to uh, keep up a good logbook. The third tip is work in pen. The primary reason for working in pen is uh, it's better protection for intellectual property. The fourth rule is document in real time. If I try and document later or go back and clean up my documentation, the chance of me actually following up on that is 50% or lower. And so the rule I have is just try and do the documentation on an ongoing basis. And the last tip I'm going to give you is the most important. So the 5% the rule. And um, what this means is as you're documenting, it's going to increase your time because you have to write things down. But the extra time to document cannot add more than 5% to the task time. And the reason for this rule is the thing that we fight against as human beings in documentation is we think it's going to take us a lot of extra time to document. But if you hold yourself that I'm going to spend no more than 5% extra time, then that's a very small uh, extra amount of time. And when you consider the benefits of the logbook, they easily outweigh 5%. So I cut whatever corners I need in order to, to meet the 5% rule.